He says also, When you have overcome the force of the evil tendencies, then you will have to abandon even the good ones. So you actually are not choosing the good ones over the bad ones, ultimately. You, re you are stepping aside from all tendencies. You will then experience the supreme truth with the intelligence that rises from the good tendencies. Another problem here is that the, um, the idea is that we are gradually getting moving towards liberation that we can approach libera liberation by um, following good tendencies. Well, liberation is sometimes described as the unconditioned state. You cannot get to the unconditioned state through the conditioned state. Unconditioned the unconditioned state, by, very, by its very definition, means that it's not conditioned by anything, it's not determined by anything. It's a quantum leap. You move from the conditioned to the unconditioned. There's no gradual process in between. Um, how do you do that? Well, there's, there's, it, it's something which either happens or it doesn't. You're, you're at, the only thing you can do is be open to that possibility. Uh, and, and not miss it if it happens, or not feel that you're going mad, or whatever. Um, so, this is quite a tricky passage of, of the sisters here. Um, very often spiritual teachings are confused with mental health. Um, you get this within Buddhism itself. One part of Buddhism, so-called Hinayana teaching, is actually concerned with mental development. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But there's nothing spiritual about it. There's nothing spiritual about mental, de mental development any more than there's something spiritual about going to the gym. Um, it depends on your definition of spirituality, I suppose. But uh, this, the the definition of spirituality I'm working with here is to do with freeing the attention, bringing the attention back to itself and not allowing it to be hijacked willy-nilly. So um, that's something you either do or you don't do. It's something that um, doesn't somehow happen as a result of meditating regularly or whatever. But once you've got some some sense of yourself as consciousness, once you've had some insight into that uh, and a, a conviction has arisen within yourself that that is in fact the case, then, then you, you're in a position to tell, well, what are the good tendencies here and what are the bad tendencies? Your psychology is still there. Your psychology is something which is obscuring your your intelligence your your innate intelligence that you're actually consciousness so you can start from that point of view you can start identifying the good tendencies and the bad tendencies and they're not good or bad from a moral point of view the good tendencies are what allow you uh, or what encourage you to bring your attention back to itself to bring your attention to uh, to its own freedom. The bad tendencies are, are to do with dullness, with not acknowledging the fact that your attention has been hijacked. These are the good and bad tendencies we're talking about. And I'm sure we'll have a lot more to say about that later on. But this is the context in which we make self-effort, in which God doesn't come into it. Is our attention hijacked now? Yes, it is. So we've got a choice. We can bring it back. Is our attention hijacked now? Yes, it is. I'm not interested. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it, the being hijacked. 
This is the choice we can make. This is the self-effort that we can make on an ongoing basis. This is where free will arises. It only arises once we've got some perspective on these so-called good and bad latent tendencies. So I'm sure much more of that to follow.